Right, we have learned how to build a portable solar system model in the introduction and assembly video and we have also learned what the principles are upon which the portable solar system operates. Learned, we learned that in the video called the principles of using the portable solar system model. So we are now ready to have a look at a practical situation and to understand why we see the planets where we do see them. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a situation in round about August 2012 and at that time we had a very striking appearance of Jupiter and Venus in the early morning skies and in the evening skies we had Mars and Saturn moving uh, past each other and I will get to that in a moment. But first of all let's use the model to see the planets as they were in, Mar in August 2012 and uh, to understand why we do see them where they happen to be. So, first of all, we have the model orientated in the, more or less in the evening position. And in that position, we first of all, as we explained in the introduction, the Earth rotates with your observer standing on the Earth. And this would be standing at a point roughly where Africa is, and particularly southern Africa. So, from the middle of the day, the Earth rotates and your observer sees in the western horizon, which is down that away, sees the sun set. And at that particular point, the sky is no longer blue, which means then we can see right through it and we can see whatever is above the horizon, that being the western horizon and this being the eastern horizon. So if we look up into our skies, what do we see at this time? Well, first of all, we see there is Saturn there, which is unmistakable with its rings. And there we have the little red planet Mars. And then further towards the east, we'd have Neptune, which is uh, too difficult to see without a telescope. Uh, maybe a good pair of binoculars might do it. And then Uranus is also fairly difficult uh, to see. Uh, with the naked eye, perhaps some pair of binoculars would help that as well. So the ones that we are really interested in at the moment are Saturn and Mars. So let's have a look and see where the model is saying where they are. Now, of course, what I'm doing here is using the model to help you understand why we see Saturn there and Mars there. Where on Earth are they? What are they doing? Well, remember that the orbits from our southern point of view move in an, a clockwise direction so we have Saturn is busy moving this way it's going to take 27 years to go all the way around there and back again and we have Mars which is going to take maybe around about two years to go there and come back so you can see that Mars is actually moving a lot more quickly quicker than what Saturn is so we've seen them there now why are they there so let's have a look from the model and we're standing here in the southern part of Africa and if we look up into the sky there we will see Saturn in the same place as we see the real Saturn and this side of it on the eastern side of it that is we have Mars now about a month ago Mars was in fact there and what we did is we were able to look up in the sky and we would first see Mars and then Saturn. Of course what that meant was that Mars set before Saturn did, Saturn setting a bit later. But because Mars is moving more quickly in its orbit, it has subsequently overtaken or as we like to say in astronomy, undertaken Saturn we say it undertaken because it's gone through on the inside uh, of Saturn it has now moved more to the east so what we have seen in the uh, month of August and this is since the beginning of August until mid-August Mars had moved from being west of Saturn to being directly next to Saturn in that case it would have been right about there in line of sight and by the end of August it will have moved well beyond Saturn 
What made this movement particularly interesting was uh, and, and, and striking was the fact that we had way in the distance, light years away, we had a star called Speaker, which was round about there. So these two, Saturn and Mars, were lined up very closely with Speaker. And in fact, at the time when Mars was next to Saturn, Speaker was perhaps uh, um, somewhere in the picture. And it actually made a beautiful little photograph of Speaker to the left, Mars in the middle, and Saturn to the right. And of course that is looking from our southern hemisphere perspective. So we now understand why we see those two planets there. So what other planets can we see? Well in our evening we can see this is our horizon, and that is all we can see. What we can say of course is if we look straight through the ground and point it in that direction there, that's more or less where Venus is now. So if I were able to look straight through the Earth, I would see Venus there. And then I would see Mars around about there. Mercury runs around the Sun so very fast, uh, once every two months, that it goes right around the Sun, so that's its year, that it is probably somewhere going around the back of the Sun the, uh, at the beginning of the month. It was actually closer to this side of the Sun, but it moves so quickly. So how do we get to see Venus and Jupiter. Well, let's see what happens as the day progresses. There are sunsets, and there Saturn sets, and there Mars sets, and we continue through until our midnight. There we are, and I've moved the model so that you are standing upright again, and there we have uh, Uranus and Neptune up in our skies. We continue to rotate, and we rotate to a point where our horizon moves down below the Sun and that is our eastern horizon. So it moves below the Sun the horizon and we get day. But before day breaks, let's watch what happens with our horizon. There we see Venus and there we see Jupiter. Now, this is suggesting to us that Venus is above Jupiter, but I know from having a look and from seeing the uh, sky maps that Jupiter is in fact slightly above Venus in that morning sky. So what we've got here is we would see in the morning, we would see Jupiter rise, and then we would see Venus rise, and just before sunrise, if we looked up in the sky in that direction, we would see Venus, a very bright light, almost looks like an aeroplane with its landing lights coming straight at you. And we would see, just a little bit above it, we would see Jupiter. At that point, if we go and have a look at our sky in the early morning, and there we stand on our uh, observing platform, on Africa and the only planets that are visible to us at all that are on our side of the Earth are Venus and Jupiter. The other planets are all below our horizon. So this gives a very clear indication of why we are seeing planets where we do. And I would just like to quickly take a situation that we would perhaps often see in the evening sky and in the evening, which is a time when more of us are uh, awake and have time to actually have a look at the sky, and we often see Venus as a very, very bright object in our western sky. And when you're looking at it, which way is it moving? Well, clearly, looking at the model, you are there on your Earth, and you are looking up and you see Venus up there in your western sky, Venus is moving towards Earth and it is also moving faster than what Earth does. Remember an inner planet orbits more quickly than does an outer planet. So here Venus is the inner and Earth is the outer. So it is actually coming between the Earth. Now just remember the Earth is also moving at the same time and Venus is catching up. But for the purposes of this demonstration we'll just consider that the Earth is staying put. So Venus is in that case coming closer and closer towards you. So what you can see from the model is that you were looking out and you saw Venus there and it's actually getting 
brighter and brighter. It's actually coming towards you in its orbit and it'll come closer and closer towards you and then it dims and it moves down, dips down between us and the sun and it becomes the morning star. It's nice to remember that that transit of 2012 and the previous one of 2004 where Venus moved between us and the sun was because Venus moved right in between us and the sun and that is, uh, takes a bit more explanation and that will be in another video. Right, what I was going to say about Venus and I mentioned that it would be getting eventually getting brighter and brighter initially but then it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer is as it comes closer to the earth and its one side is illuminated by the sun it's getting closer it's apparently bigger so it just gets brighter and brighter we see more of the reflection from closer up the reflection from the sun or Venus onto the earth but as it gets closer and closer to the earth From here, that is the side of Venus that is illuminated. So here from Earth we only see a very faint sliver of Venus. Venus exhibits the same kind of shapes as the Moon does. It has a crescent. It forms a crescent and it waxes and wanes in the same way as the Moon does. So Venus will come between us and there is some compromise point where the balance is between how close Venus is to us and how much of the crescent that we can see that determines where its brightest point is. So as I said, it comes brighter and brighter and brighter, reaches a maximum, then slowly dims, and then it disappears down between us and the sun, and it will appear on the other side in the morning sky. So I trust that this little demonstration has given you a very good idea of how the model can show you not only where the planets are, but it can also help you understand exactly why you are seeing them where you do see them.